Amitya Jivelek. I'm an associate professor at the Center for Public Health and Genomics at the University of Virginia. I'm here at the Vascular Discovery 2023, and I'm a member of the Vascular Discovery Program Committee. And I'm here to talk to one of our presenters today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. My name is Sharka. I am a rising fourth year medical student at the University of Michigan and a SARNA fellow at Stanford in Dr. Nick Weaver's lab. So why don't we get to know you a little bit about uh, and your research. So I know that uh, Nick has been interested in aphrocytosis for a while, and I assume this work stems from that interest. So can you tell us a little bit about the motivation behind this work? Yeah, of course. So aphrocytosis is really the process by which dying cells are cleared uh, from the atherosclerotic plaque by macrophages. and previous work in our lab had shown that this ligand, CD47, is involved in sort of resisting uh, edibility by macrophages, is a do not eat me ligand. And by blocking CD47, we see a reduction in plaque size, a reduction in inflammation in human studies. However, this treatment is associated with anemia in patients. So we were very excited about the efficacy of this, this therapeutic, but we knew that we would have to really find a way to mitigate the anemia by, uh, by some method. So you're talking about the systemic effect of anemia. That sounds like a perfect targeted delivery approach, right? So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so in an effort to really reduce or mitigate the anemia, we took a two-pronged a 2, a two -prong strategy. Mm -hmm. The first was we used our understanding of CD47's downstream signaling mm -hmm. pathway, and we chose to target uh, the downstream effector molecule SHIP1. And second, we leveraged our understanding of existing nanotechnology to allow for cell-specific delivery. And so in my studies, using this, this nanotherapy, we showed that we could both reduce plaque burden and inflammation and also uh, mitigate the anemia. Of course, now you need a translational model, right? So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we were very excited about it, the transla translational applications and potential for this therapy. So we used this new translational animal model to really try to study, again, its safety and efficacy mm -hmm. um, and, uh, in, in, a, in a larger model. Um, so what did you find? What are your exciting, tell us about your <laughs> exciting findings. So uh, we essentially found that, similar to mice, that these nanothera this na na nanotherapy was still specifically taken up by macrophages in the blood, um, which was promising. Although we were disappointed that we didn't see a significant difference in plaque burden, we believe that this is a result of the early time point of disease mm -hmm. that we were studying. Mm -hmm. Very excitingly, though, we did see a reduction, a significant reduction in inflammation as measured by PET-CT and uh, a trending decrease in macrophage infiltration into this early fatty streak of disease. And so we felt as though that this, this therapy really was, kind of even at this early stage, having an effect on early inflammation. So can you tell us a little bit then about how this research fits into the larger mission of American Heart Association? So I believe that this story has really taken um, so many turns and what the lab has done is really follow the science and then always think about the ways in which we can translate that back um, for patients. And so I think that in kind of every stage from looking at CD47 to uh, SHIP1 and using uh, and collaborating with those that can really improve the delivery of the drug as well, we're able to really make pretty incredible advances in our ability to understand and potentially take these uh, translatable therapies to humans. Absolutely. And what is next for your career? So I will be, I'm a rising M4, uh, and so I will be uh, applying to residency in the fall, and I'm really excited to go back uh, to medical school soon. And is cardiology in your future? potentially vascular surgery or interventional radiology. <laughs> that still fits the HA mission. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to us. It was a wonderful uh, opportunity to get to know one of our presenters today. Thank you.